So uh, what we're going to do here is we're taking a charger, and usually what I do is I just buy a charger on eBay that's broken. This one's actually working. And we're going to take it apart, and we're going to basically, you can do one of two things. Like on this charger here, this is an Ego charger. I bought it broken on eBay for five bucks. Um, is non-working. So you get it, uh, you just pull the circuit board out and, uh, and you know, throw it in your pile of dead circuit boards. And then uh, you can see here I just crimped on uh, a set of Anderson connectors. So one of the things you want to pay attention to is the thickness of the wires that go to the charging uh, of the battery. This is going to be what's going to limit your power output from the kit. So uh, this particular charger is going to go with a low power kit that I'm building that's about uh, 500, 600 watts. So I'm okay with having this really thin, looks like 16 gauge multi-strand wire that I can crimp to with my 12 gauge wire. Uh, but if you're going to do the Cyclone kit like we're doing with a high power kit that's 3000 watts, your best bet is to pull the whole thing out and solder directly to the connectors for your battery. So what you're using for this charger is it's just a mounting bracket for the battery mm. on the on the wheelbarrow. You're not actually going to charge the batteries with it. We're going to screw the back plate to the metal back plate on the uh, underneath the wheelbarrow by taking it apart, and then we're going to put the uh, and that's kind of a tricky thing to do too because. Uh, first of all, when it comes to taking apart these chargers, they don't want you to take the chargers apart. So they use a screw that has a security Torx head, which basically means it's Torx. This looks like uh, maybe a T15 or a T10, but you can see how it has a little tiny thing in the center that prevents you from using a normal Torx head. So what you have to do is uh, look on eBay, and what I did is I just buy a Torx uh, security kit from China because they cost maybe two dollars and you get a whole collection of Torx bits that all have the security bit. Now any electronic uh, tool kits that you get that you want to modify for any electric power tools they almost always have this Torx uh, bit and so they're just really handy to have around. And they're different sizes for everything. It's really hard to figure out the size. You basically just put it in and see if it sticks and it turns and if it sticks and it turns like this one does then that's the right bit. So that's pretty much... Oh, and the other thing is when we're mounting this back plate on the wheelbarrow, we have to make sure to mount the back plate be be between the screws. Because once we mount the back plate to the wheelbarrow, we have to be able to screw the front back on. So this one's going to go together uh, without any circuit board in it, just with this. And then uh, to on the edge of the case, I just took some little nibblers here and then nibbled the plastic out and then I'm going to route that through the nibbled plastic. So, um, and then it really is smart to use a zip tie as a strain relief. So you don't want this uh, pulling on this cable to pull, pull out of the thing. So just put a zip tie right inside the case so that when you close it up, it holds tight and that zip tie will keep the, keep the strains from pulling out. So that's that. So we've got our Greenworks battery here, and you can see on the end of the Greenworks battery we have a negative, a positive, a C, and an omega. So uh, basically the only things you care about is the negative and the positive. And we're going to hook that up real quick as a fully charged battery and test it. It's showing 82.9 volts, which is actually a little bit of a problem for us because I believe that the Cyclone controller has an 80 volt uh, high voltage cutoff. So that means one of two things. Either you can do this setup with this battery pack and just make sure you don't charge the battery pack all the way up before you plug it into the wheelbarrow. Or what you can do is just charge your pack all the way up and then just stick it on any of your power tools and then just run it for probably a minute and it'll drag it down to 80 volts. And then just pop it out, throw it in the wheelbarrow and it'll work. And that's only with a fully charged battery that you'll have to do that. So, um, like I said, you can use this and you'll, it's definitely the way to get the most power out of that. And I don't know, it might actually work with 82 volts, who knows? So uh, I don't usually run 80 volt packs, so this is new to me. So If uh, someone was doing this from scratch, you'd recommend that they go with the 56 volt? I really volt. like the 56 volt packs and the reason is, is because uh, 52 volts is about the voltage that doesn't conduct through dry skin. So um, that's why most of the e-bikes out there are between 48 and 52 volts because you can touch the electrical contacts in your skin and not get shocked. When you start getting up to 80 volts, it, that's not the case. So you can see I'm using nitrile gloves here 
which you should always do when you're working with, with electronics. But, uh, you know, if I stuck my tongue in this battery, it would not be good. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> and it potentially it could kill me, so I don't know who's going to lick an 80-volt battery. But uh, what we want to do is we're going to mark uh, right here the positive and the negative so that we don't get them mixed up once we start messing around with it. Uh, I'm just going to write with a marker. And then uh, I've got this Greenworks charger apart, and it looks like... It's pretty light gauge wires. Yeah, that's not going to work. So we're going to have to take this piece apart and see if there's a way to solder to these metal connectors. So now we've got this apart, and you can see here that the wire gauges are not going to cut it for 3,000 watts. So the, this is the charge cable. That's maybe 18 gauge, and these are like 20 or 22 gauge. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to solder, I've cut away the heat shrink tubing, we're going to have to solder directly to these metal tabs, which can be a little bit tricky because if it gets too hot, it's going to melt the plastic. So um, what you want to do is use a, a, a soldering gun. Now I use a high power Weller uh, gun. I don't know how much it is uh, in watts, but it's pretty powerful. And what we're going to do is we're going to solder this 12 gauge wire here uh, directly to those tabs. And the key to making that work is uh, flux. So you want to use flux and you want to use uh, flux core solder um, because you just can't have enough flux. Uh, you should definitely shouldn't breathe the fumes, but it seems like I always do. You still seem pretty smart, so it works working out so far. Okay, so the problem we're having is soldering onto that was really hard. I had to use my my high temperature gun here. This uh, I don't know what it, I think it's oh it's a hundred watt gun because the the other weller wasn't powerful enough to get the metal hot enough to get it to. So what we've got is we've got a bunch of pretty ugly uh, solders, but they're solid, so that's all that matters, and they're covered with flux. And now we just need to figure out how to get it on, get those things through this plastic piece. And really the only thing we can do is just kind of carve this plastic piece away until it can we can get it to fit without breaking anything. So I'm taking a mat knife here and I'm just sort of carving away this plastic piece until it's going to fit. Keep it from uh, shorting out on anything else. <laughs> and then we managed to cut that so you can see it sticking through and now we're just going to mount it right back in the hole. We had this uh, bee... Um, oh, the, yeah, swarm. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're putting it back together and what we want to do is we want to do a strain relief on the cable so that when it yanks it doesn't come out. And so what we're going to do is figure out just a little bit inside so there's a little bit of slack in the cable, and then we're just going to put a zip tie on it. And usually what I do is I put a zip tie on pretty tight, and then I'm going to wrap it in duct tape. And I found that, that the combination of the zip tie and the duct tape basically doesn't move. So now we got the whole charger back together and we're going to test it. So to do that, we strip the ends, make sure they're not touching, okay? Then we plug the battery in. We don't have any smoke. That's and so good. we carefully test these without letting them touch each other. And we got the 82 volts. So, um, let's show you right here. So that means we're good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to crimp the ends of this, but we're going to take the battery back off because Good. we don't want to accidentally short them out. So we're just, we plug the battery into test, then take it out to put this on. Battery should be out as a default for this whole process, yep. I'm guessing. We're just, yep, testing okay. the, cool. right. So these are Anderson power pole crimpers, and I've had really good luck with, and basically you just line it up and crimp it down. And uh, you can buy the crimpers for about, 
uh, uh, 30 bucks on eBay. And then you get these uh, connectors, and they're good for up to, these are rated for 45 amps. So 80 volts at 45 amps is pretty much, this controller can only do 40 amps, um, and it's about 3,000 watts. They're great, they're cheap, they're easy, they're easy to put on. Um, and the trick is, let's see, that's the positive, is you crimp this on, and then you have to put the plastic piece on, and you have to put it on with the tongue side down, and you push it until it clicks. So the nicest thing about the Anderson power pole is you can plug them in when it's hot and you won't destroy the connector. And there's very few connectors that you can do that with. Uh, this one's not going in. All right, well these connectors are from a machine feed that they accidentally sent me the wrong ones from eBay, but I got them for free, so. I'm not complaining, oh, so I just have to trim, trim, them. trim them down because they're used to being fed through a machine. You can see this is the strip. So oh, yeah. normally you'd want to buy not the machine fed ones. It's like a machine gun So style. tongue goes down like this. You push it all the way in Oop. until you hear it click. Uh -oh. And sometimes it's really hard to get it all the way in. So what I'll use is like a bicycle spoke or something that's sharp and pointy and use that to push it in. I'm crimping on some 10, 12 gauge uh, crimpers and then I'm just going to put these Anderson connectors on the end. It takes like two seconds. So I've had really good luck with crimp connectors for high voltage e-bike applications. So um, soldering is great, it's time consuming, and uh, it can be problematic if you're not good at soldering. But the crimping is just quick, dirty, easy fast and uh, yeah it works surprisingly well so so I use it and then I usually just I crimp it twice instead of once and that's it